If there's one thing in this series that absolutely nobody can agree on, it's how Sonic should control. Even the official Sonic team doesn't know. Even the two adventure games, games that are pretty close in their control, have a lot of minute differences that make the playing experience really different. And the same can be said for the Boost games, the topic of today's video. One consistent part of the Boost games' controls has been in a 3-2 split across the game so far. That of course being the double jump and the air dash. But which of these two moves manages to be used in more engaging level design and just generally have more use across the games they're in? Well, that's what we're here to find out. And if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to subscribe and maybe even leave a like. Now starting off with the air dash, this move is actually introduced in the adventure games as a method to sort of reposition yourself after a jump. While I'm only talking about its implementation in the boost games, I do think that the adventure jump dash was probably my favorite iteration of it. Unsurprisingly, the two boost games to feature it are also the ones that focus the least on platforming and more on quick reaction time. But when these platforming sections do come up, you can see its inevitable shortcomings, but also its upsides. The Unleashed and Generations jump dashes are pretty much the same in that after you use it, you lose all of your forward momentum and you drop down like a rock, a tradition carried over from Sonic 06 of all games. It's definitely much more felt in Sonic Unleashed, but the controls are generally more stiff than Sonic Generations and the platforming just feels a bit worse. It's in Generations where it really shines in the boost formula as you can chain together a lot of quick actions, really rewarded by the game's level design. It generates this really nice feeling of flow that I feel is missing from the platforming in Unleashed. You can use it to get on a platform that you couldn't reach otherwise with the regular Generations jump, but might overshoot with a boost. There's a lot of little sections like this one in Seaside Hill where you can use the jump dash to go back to get on a shortcut that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to reach. In general, I find the jump dash more useful in 2D than 3D, as in 3D you could usually boost over the gap you want to reach to get to the other side because it's pretty forgiving. There are also sections where you're launched up into the air and you have to use a precise air dash to get through a hoop or onto a rail. Now, obviously, you use the boost to do this as well, but an air dash can be much more precise. Now, the double jump has been a staple of every single boost game directed by Kishimoto, and even Lost World as well, which started off with Sonic Colors. While games like Generations and Unleashed focus more on reaction time, Sonic Colors decided to slow things down and focus more on platforming. The same thing rang true from Sonic Forces, and kinda sorta Sonic Frontiers. But also, wow, these jump balls are looking a lot worse for wear. Well, at least Colors looks nice, but Forces and Frontiers? Ooh. That's actually a problem I have with the double jump in general, and it's just not as cool as the jump dash. The jump dash was a unique ability that Sonic has, but while a double jump is just sort of derivative of the genre. Which, you know, makes sense, since it is derivative of the genre, but still, it felt a lot cooler to have a unique move in his arsenal. Especially as Sonic suffers some more and more of an identity crisis with the newer games. That's not to say the double jump is bad though, I really enjoy using it in most of these games. And while it's kind of short compared to the other double jumps you see in other platformers, it still feels nice to use here. It really helps make the awkward platforming a bit better. One issue I did start to notice, especially in Sonic Colors, is that when you went for a double jump in some platforming sections, you accidentally homing attacked an enemy below, which proved to be pretty annoying at some points. It was never a big issue, but it did get a little bit annoying. As it is, the double jump functions fairly standardly across all of the boost games it was featured in. However, in Sonic Frontiers Update 3, three new playable characters were added, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles. And Amy has a really interesting double jump. When combined with the card bounce, Amy can get some insane height with her two double jumps. And while it's unfortunate that this is limited to Sonic Frontiers, which is one of the weaker Sonic games level design-wise, I still think it's fun to mess around with at the very least. It's definitely a different kind of double jump when compared to Sonic's, because it takes on a more puzzle-solving approach to the platforming challenges. Amy's double jump in comparison to Sonic's though showcases a bigger issue with Sonic's double jump that I have. In Sonic Colors, you're able to use the double jump to reposition yourself after making a jump that you thought you would make, but ended up not making. You could just double jump back to the ledge. In Sonic Forces, and to a lesser extent Sonic Frontiers, your ability to do this has become severely limited just due to how stiff the game's controls are, with the issue of falling straight down after the double jump returning here. So, which one of these two Sonic movement options do I think is the better choice for a boost game? When it comes down to it, both of them try to do the same thing, help out with platforming, whether in 3D or 2D. They can both help you reposition after a missed jump, sometimes, and in general aid with precision. Both of them have their fair share of issues with their implementation, and even different implementations like we see with Amy, but overall my personal preference is the jump dash. Now I've gone back and forth on this a lot, in fact I had this video idea like two years ago at this point, but back then, I ended up residing with the double jump. The reason that I think the jump dash is better is just because it's a cooler part of Sonic's moveset. It makes him feel more unique while providing the same sort of effectiveness that a double jump provides. One big thing is that we need to make sure that Sonic can act out of it faster, and that he doesn't drop to the floor immediately. As well as that, he needs to carry over most of his momentum that was conserved from the previous speed. When implemented like this, it would really help with the flow state, which I think is one of the best parts of Sonic the Hedgehog. The exhilarating feeling of nailing multiple actions in a row and getting rewarded for it was one of the best parts of playing these games. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below, and that's it for me. Everyone, signing off.